So when you when you release Multiply, it was it was not really in the warp state of mind. Uh, what was the reaction? Well, of course, Warp had Jimmy Tenor before, and uh, they also had Boy and they had Lightmares on Wax. So I guess you could say, and Prefuse. So somehow, in the middle of those things, it was kind of acceptable. But my sound was more pop, uh, and Steve, the boss of the label, didn't like it. He said it was too straight and it wouldn't work. And I said, Ah, you're a fool because I give you a record that you might actually sell. This is a good record and people will like it. And he's like, No. So they gave no promotion, no posters, no nothing, and it was one of the best records they ever had. Yeah. <laughs> so now they let me do what I want to do and they just shut up. Uh, your first albums were, were quite experimental, like Muddling Gear and so on, Super Collider. Uh, Multiply was the beginning of your pop side, and Jim uh, is definitely produced in, in that way. Um, according to you, uh, how will the next album look like? Uh, kind of like Mertz Bow meets um, Can. Crowd rock, noise, industrial, with opera maybe, like Klaus Naomi. Uh, you worked with Moki and Gonzalez for this album. They are great musicians. Uh, in which way uh, did they help you? Spiritual advice, especially Moki, because sometimes you get really feeling bad about yourself, you know. You think everything is shit, and then Moki will tell you Mocky's it's good. always a... Yeah, and he, he brings you up, and he's... He has a lot of good advice and he plays incredible music, you know. He's always, he can play any instrument, you know, in a way that I like and gives me a lot of hope. And also, he, he likes to finish things, you know. I'm the kind of guy, I can, I, I can start something, but I'm like, oh yeah, I don't need to finish yet, I know what will happen. But he's like, yeah, but you have to finish it, you didn't do it yet, you know. So I'm like, oh yeah, he's right, you know. So Mocky likes to see the finished product, you know, which is really important for a producer. That's why it's great to work with. Gonzo is just, uh, on this record, he just came in and played piano, actually. Nice. And he helped me to do vocal arrangements for two songs, which were amazing. And, um, you know, he's a hell of an arranger, a hell of a musician, everyone knows. He's like a fucking genius, you know. So uh, it's always a pleasure to work with him. It's just like a master class whenever you work with him, you know what I mean? He knows everything about arranging and composition. It's insane. And Moki didn't play some drums on your album? He played drums. Play drums. I even played drums on one yeah. song. Incredible, out of my system. <laughs> I'm playing the fucking drums, it's incredible. I mean, I'm not a good drummer, but I could, I could play long enough to hold a three-minute song together. A few edits. And did you participate on, on their own album? Gonzo uh, and Moki? Yeah, Mocky. not so much. I didn't really. I helped a little bit on both of their new albums. Moki has a new album too. Vocal parts? Mm, yeah, actually. A little vocal part, also percussion. And um, it was Gonzo just vocals. Okay. It was a pleasure. <laughs> There's a song imagine, working yeah. together. No, we're, we're, we're gonna get it. We're, we're living together. This one. Why did you call your album Jim? Is it a, a nickname? It is a nickname. Not many people call me Jim, though, has to be said. Only a few. One of those, famously, is Matthew Herbert, who's just done a remix for me that's fucking crazy. Um, but uh, he calls me Jim. And uh, I thought, yeah, it's nice the way he calls me Jim. You know, my uncle's called Jim. And I like that name, but not many people call me Jim, so I thought oh, maybe I should encourage it. Maybe if I call myself Jim, other people might think, oh yeah, it's Jim. People on the bus have start to call me Jim now, it makes me happy. <laughs> I just wanted people to call me Jim more often, so I thought, fuck it, I'll call my album Jim, and then people might call me Jim. Mm. <laughs> it's working. Okay, um, I, I think some tracks appears like uh, Prince or Michael Jackson stuff. Um, did you listen to, to them when you were young? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Off the Wall, Thriller, no one could avoid these albums, they were so fucking massive. And that was when I was a kid, perfect age, I was like 12, you know? Mm. It's just the timing was amazing, I was so lucky. 
to be around like the great one of the greatest pop records of all time. Well, two of them, amazing. And then of course Purple Rain, the same time. So um, yeah, I was obsessed by both of those records, Purple Rain and Thriller, and Off the Wall. Man, yeah, I mean, of course, man. No one. I mean, no one I knew didn't like Thriller. I mean, that was fucking <laughs> huge. I mean, everyone loved Billy Jean. Didn't know what the hell it was talking about. It was like, what? It doesn't matter. It's just that. It's that beat. You just. It'll never happen again. Like they try 25 years later to get all these producers to do it, add something to Thriller, you know? No one can do anything to that record. It's a fucking masterpiece. You can't, it's like fucking, you know, pop I, masterwork. I agree. When I, when I was younger, I was dancing in front of my TV. Ooh. <laughs> I know, it's amazing, yeah? And he looks so good, he danced so good. Fuck. It's, you know. Never again, man, in our lifetime will we see that. We see Asher and those guys that try, but no one's going to be a freak like Michael Jackson. And Quincy Jones, you know, the combination. Something uh, surprising in a magazine. Uh, is it true that you had dinner with Prince and James Brown? No. Is it a dream? <laughs> Probably a dream. Uh, I almost went to Prince's house though. That's true. Uh, a friend of mine who is one of the producers in LA of this record, Justin Stanley, his wife is Nika Costa. Nika Costa is a big friend of Prince's. She sings with him, she supports Prince many times. And, uh, and Justin is a friend of Prince. And he says, oh yeah, we go to Prince's house. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And he was like, no, no, we're going to go to Prince's house. I was like, he's being serious. As soon as I thought, oh, we're really doing it, I was in the back of the car, silent, you know. Feeling really sick, you know. Like, I don't want to meet Prince, you know. I don't want to like see him walking out of his own door like, hey, what's happening? <laughs> and it would have freaked me out, you know. It would have like kind of destroyed me in a way, you know. It's like meeting, I'm yeah. It's like meeting someone out of a novel or something, you know, a fictional character. Um, but anyway, no. But I did also support James Brown. I opened up for him once in Stuttgart. One of the highlights of my career. I got to share the stage with James Brown. It's a fucking hell of a thing. Amazing. But never got to meet the man. Um, why did you record your album at Los Angeles and not in, in Berlin when yeah. you leave? Los Angeles is more sun. The ladies are much nicer, you know. It's an album for the ladies? Could be, you know. I don't know. LA is amazing. I love LA. It's just like... thing is, not all LA is good. And most people say, what, LA? You like LA? And I'm like, yeah, but <clears throat> come on, LA is a big place. I wasn't in Hollywood, I wasn't in like these tacky parts, I was in Sherman Oaks, it's really beautiful, full of like family houses and like crazy gardens and green trees, and it's amazing, it's like a paradise, so we got to record in a small place that was really funky and just gave me a good feeling, you know, so uh, it's just because I felt good with this guy Justin Stanley in his little studio and I just thought this is going to work and, and it really did, you know. 
And if you recorded Jim in Berlin, uh, do you think it would have been different? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Completely different, yeah. Colder or...? Well, you know, I just couldn't achieve the unity of sound that I got in, uh, in the studio with Justin Stanley. You know, we had a certain drum sound, a certain rhythm sound that's very much to do with his small room and his drums and the way we, we used his equipment. And uh, it has a particular sound, you know. Just the ambience of not being in Berlin and traveling and having only two weeks to do everything. Just this pressure and this kind of kind of work ethic was really important, I think, to get the album done. Because actually we recorded everything in 10 days in LA. We were like really like boom, boom, boom. All right, we'll track one, let's do it. We know we wrote everything very carefully first, you know. So we're like, we know what we need to do. Let's just go in and like, it's like it was military, you know. It's like day one, track one, let's hit it. It's like, let's get the drum sound, let's get it. That's not right, let's get it, let's get it. Okay, good, we got it, we got it. Next track, you know. And it was cool because it's such, it's such a nice way of working when you, when you know you just, everything is prepared, you know. It's a lot to do with Mocky, you know. He, he brought a lot of focus. And like I say, when he's in it, he's really like focused. And we focused in very different ways. I focus on really weird details and he's focusing on some other details and together we're a good team, you know. I think five persons are playing on stage. Yeah, That's right, sure. including me, yeah. Who, who is it? So we've got Denzel Sinclair on keyboards and voice. We've got Taylor Savvy on bass and guitar and voice. Denzel. Yeah, okay. we've got Willie B on drums and organ bass pedals. And we've got Andre Vida on two saxophones at the same time. And also the incredible electric sax vocoder combo. And, uh, and then there's me and all my electronic machines bringing the future, bringing the past, wrapping it all together, bringing the gym experience. Do you attach a great importance uh, to your look? I saw you uh, live uh, with uh, Cosmic Clothes, no? Uh, what do you wear on, uh, on this tour? Yeah, I have a lot of good clothes for this tour. I feel lucky I met a designer friend through my girlfriend who's like been making a lot of cool shit. This guy called Adam Kimmel. He's a New York designer and I've been just wearing his shit. He gave me some stuff to wear and it's fucking fly, you know. It's a bit more like restrained than my usual gold and sparkly shit but people like it. It's kind of like oh, it looks nice, man. Yeah, I like to look good, you know. I gotta feel good on stage. What is the first thing you are doing when, when you wake up in the morning? Do you, do you sing? No, it's very bad to sing first thing in the morning, my voice teacher told me. Although I used to sing all the time in the morning. It's probably what screwed my voice up. I have to be careful of my voice. Because a one hour show like this is really like taking a lot of energy, you know, from the voice, from me. I had a problem with my voice recently and uh, now everyone in the bus knows about it because I'm always complaining about it. But uh, I have to warm up my voice for one hour every day before I sing. But it's working. But yeah, you have to be careful with the instrument, you know. Mm. I stopped smoking and drinking just to look after it, you know. It's crazy. Sacrifice. Mm. And with such a voice, do you think you can become black one day? I mean, black like, uh, like Michael? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that wouldn't be too difficult, would it? <laughs> Well, I guess I'm as black as Amy Winehouse. And finally, could you make just a small a cappella for the French girls? No. You're not going to do the bass line for me? Yeah. Uh, go on. I'll give you some clicks. Let's do it. You got to do the bass tracks. I don't know. You just sing a bass line and we'll do it. Keep it coming. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of know what you're saying. I think. What's the deuce? I'm figuring it all out. What's the deuce? I'm figuring it all out. What's the deuce? I'm figuring it all out. 
I'm a question mark, walking, talking, question mark. Ooh, I'm a question mark, walking, talking, question mark. Ooh, ooh, I'm a question mark, walking, talking, question mark. Mm, mm, whoa, is a question, and what's the deuce? Figuring it all out. But what's the deuce? Figuring it all out. What's the deuce? Figuring it all out. Thank you. Thank you. My doctor told me I was not a machine. She told me that I let let off some steam. Better with eyes closed. 